This is section 004 of Mark Twain's Speeches. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Compliments and Degrees by Mark Twain. Read by John Greenman. Delivered at the Lotus Club, January 11th, 1908. In introducing Mr. Clemens, Frank R. Lawrence, the president of the Lotus Club, recalled the fact that the first club dinner in the present clubhouse, some fourteen years ago, was in honor of Mark Twain. I wish to begin this time at the beginning, lest I forget it altogether. That is to say, I wish to thank you for this welcome that you are giving, and the welcome which you gave me seven years ago, and which I forgot to thank you for at that time. I also wish to thank you for the welcome you gave me fourteen years ago, which I also forgot to thank you for at the time. I hope you will continue this custom to give me a dinner every seven years before I join the hosts in the other world. I, I do not know which world. Uh, Mr. Lawrence and Mr. Porter have paid me many compliments. It is very difficult to take compliments. I do not care whether you deserve the compliments or not. It is just as difficult to take them. The other night I was at the Engineers Club and enjoyed the sufferings of Mr. Carnegie. They were complimenting him there. Uh, there it was all compliments, and none of them deserved. They say that you cannot live by bread alone, but I can live on compliments. I do not make any pretense that I dislike compliments. The stronger the better, and I can manage to digest them. I, I think I have lost so much by not making a collection of compliments, to put them away and take them out again once in a while. When in England I said that I would start to collect compliments, and I began there, and I have brought some of them along. The first one of these lies i wrote them down and preserved them i think they are mighty good and extremely just it is one of hamilton maybe's compliments he said that la salle was the first one to make a voyage of the mississippi but mark twain was the first to chart light and navigate it for the whole world if that had been published at the time that i issued that book life on the mississippi it would have been money in my pocket. I tell you it is a talent by itself to pay compliments gracefully and have them ring true. It's an art by itself. Here's another compliment by Albert Bigelow Payne, my biographer. He is writing four octavo volumes about me, and he has been at my elbow two and one-half years. I, I just suppose that he does not know me, but says he knows me. He says, Mark Twain is not merely a great writer, a great philosopher, a great man. He is the supreme expression of the human being, with his strength and his weakness. What a talent for compression! It takes a genius in compression to compact as many facts as that. W. D. Howells spoke of me as first of Hartford and ultimately of the solar system, and not to say of the universe. You know how modest Howells is. If it can be proved that my fame reaches to Neptune and Saturn, well, that will satisfy even me. You know how modest and retiring Howells seems to be, but deep down he is as vain as I am. Mr. Howells had been granted a degree at Oxford, whose gown was red, he had been invited to an exercise at Columbia, and upon inquiry had been told that it was usual to wear the black gown. Later he had found that three other men wore bright gowns, and he had lamented that he had been one of the black mass and not a red torch. Edison wrote, The average American loves his family. If he has any love left over for some other person, he generally selects Mark Twain. Now here's the compliment of a little Montana girl which came to me indirectly. She was in a room in which there was a large photograph of me. 
after gazing at it steadily for a time she said we've got a john the baptist like that she also said only ours has more trimmings i, I suppose she meant the halo now here's a gold miner's compliment it is forty-two years old it was my introduction to an audience to which i lectured in a log schoolhouse there were no ladies there i wasn't famous then they didn't know me only the miners were there with their breeches tucked into their boot tops and with clay all over them they wanted someone to introduce me and they selected a miner who protested saying i don't know anything about this man anyhow i only know two things about him one is he has never been in jail and the other is i don't know why there's one thing i want to say about that english trip i knew his majesty the king of england long years ago and i didn't meet him for the first time then one thing that i regret was that some newspapers said i talked with the queen of england with my hat on i don't do that with any woman i did not put it on until she asked me to then she told me to put it on and it's a command there i thought i had carried my american democracy far enough so i put it on i have no use for a hat and never did have who was it who said that the police of london knew me why the police know me everywhere there never was a day over there when a policeman did not salute me and then put up his hand and stop the traffic of the world they treated me as though i were a duchess the happiest experience i had in england was at a dinner given in the building of the punch publication a humorous paper which is appreciated by all englishmen it was the greatest privilege ever allowed a foreigner i entered the dining-room of the building where those men get together who have been running the paper for over fifty years we were about to begin dinner when the toastmaster said just a minute there ought to be a little ceremony then there was that meditating silence for a while and out of a closet there came a beautiful little girl dressed in pink holding in her hand a copy of the previous week's paper which had in it my cartoon it broke me all up i could not even say thank you that was the prettiest incident of the dinner the delight of all that wonderful table when she was about to go i said my child you are not going to leave me i have hardly got acquainted with you she replied you know i've got to go they never let me come in here before and they never will again that is one of the beautiful incidents that i cherish at the conclusion of his speech and while the diners were still cheering him colonel porter brought forward the red and gray gown of the oxford doctor and mr clemens was made to don it the diners rose to their feet in their enthusiasm with the mortarboard on his head and looking down admiringly at himself mr twain said i like that gown i always did like red the redder it is the better i like it i was born for a savage now whoever saw any red like this there is no red outside the arteries of an archangel that could compare with this i know you all envy me i am going to have luncheon shortly with ladies just ladies i will be the only lady of my sex present and i shall put on this gown and make those ladies look dim end of compliments and degrees by mark twain read by john greenman